Thanks for coming to our talk. We're going to talk about uh, the security of project with uh, SIG release supply chain kit. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is um, Adolfo Garcia, and I am one of the tech leads with Kubernetes SIG release. I work at a company called ChainGuard, uh, and we do supply chain security. Um, I also do other stuff like, um, besides working uh, with Carlos on SIG release, I also sit on the Knative Steering Committee. I am one of the contributors to the SPDX um, S1 uh, standard. And um, I have been working on the Kubernetes release tooling for a while now. And my name is Carlos. I also work at Chainguard. I'm a member of the Kubernetes Steering Committee and also tech lead on the SIG release side and contribute to other projects inside Kubernetes. Also, I'm a maintainer of SIGStore, and uh, that's it. So um, before we start, uh, I would like just a small order of business. So contrary to popular belief, um, we are not the same person. And <laughs> I, I, I mean, none of us mind when Carlos, when I'm flattered by being called Carlos or he gets insulted by called Puerco, but not same person, all right. Um, so um, uh, before we start, I would like to talk about the origins of the projects that we're gonna be talking about. So we are SIG release and we are, the release engineering team is uh, the outfit responsible for creating the tooling that releases Kubernetes after each, each cycle. So whenever you see one new batch release or one of the uh, uh, minor releases of Kubernetes getting cut, it's us behind it and it's our tooling that does it. And the way we do it is we have this big monolith binary that we run to cut the releases and it takes care of a bunch of stuff. It builds Kubernetes, uh, the binaries, the images, uh, it builds the system packages. Now it pushes the artifacts to the registries, to GitHub, uh, all of the GitHub ob objects like tags get, uh, get uh, taken care of by that binary. And it also creates a release node. Uh, um, and then, well, you know, now it's handling the, the generation of the supply chain security artifacts that we uh, publish with every release. So a lot of work goes into this tooling. It's like several thousand probably lines of code by now. And we, for a while, we have been thinking that all of this work cannot go to waste by just applying it to Kubernetes. So the first thing that we started doing was considering how to, can we help other projects on the Kubernetes organization get uh, the benefit of this, but uh, now we're also thinking, well, this is like general purpose software that other, uh, other projects can um, uh, profit from. So uh, the binary I was talking about is called CREL, uh, which stands for Kubernetes Release uh, Toolkit. Well, yeah, I forgot the, the name. Uh, but uh, that basically combines all of our libraries that take care of all of the release steps. Like all of the release functions of that are contained in there. Yeah, and, 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 yes. and just uh, worth mention that before CREL, we had uh, like another CREL, but it was written in bash. And then we had like a lot of effort to convert all the bash scripts to become like a Go binary that we can test as well. And yeah, so, and then when we started like thinking how to make better use of all of this code uh, in not just libraries, uh, the first thing that we did was we spun out the release nodes program or maybe, well, in reality, release nodes existed before, but it's integrated into CREL. So you can now have the Kubernetes release nodes program and use it in your own tooling. And it's already uh, used in, in several projects like Knative and others. Um, and then, when we started uh, thinking about supply chain security and the way we were building things, uh, we started thinking about, okay, so how should we should build an SBOM? So we built SBOM generating libraries into our tooling. And first we started generating the SBOM inside of, of CREL. And then we spun out uh, a standalone utility called BOM, which now has evolved into a, like the multi-tool of multi tool of uh, to work with SBOMs. It can it lets you not only generate them but visualize them, query, and a bunch of other uh, functions. Uh, we also created um, we started generating SaaS attestations inside of our of our uh, of Grail, 
Uh, and then we started thinking, well, this is not the right place to do them, so we, we will, uh, we're going to move them out. So we now have another program that does that for us, and we also have a tiny utility called Publish Release uh, that handles all of the uh, GitHub page uh, and artifact uploading, uh, which all of this is derived from inside of, uh, of, uh, of Corel. So, um, and this is what we chose to uh, release and package together uh, and, and calling it the SIG release uh, toolkit. Uh, so, as I was mentioning, we're going to go and uh, uh, show a little bit of some, of some of the tools that we have. So, the first one is uh, the utility to generate test bombs. Uh, this one is called um, um, BOM. And for those not familiar with what an SBOM is, it's basically a structured list uh, that describes both the components inside of your piece of software, but also the structure, uh, so that you can uh, keep transparency, uh, be more transparent in the, in the software that you're releasing to your, um, to your users. Um, I, I'm not going to go deeper into the SBOM because I suppose m most people here came for that and are already kind of familiar. Um, so BOM uh, has a number of features. Uh, Kubernetes is, uh, generates it, uh, its SBOMs in, in SPDX which is a, the SBOM standard for, uh, from the Linux Foundation. It's an international ISO recognized uh, uh, standard. And, and the way BOM works is it will, well, we'll go into the into its strengths, uh, but some of, some of the um, strengths are like, it lets you analyze code bases in Go and capture the, the structure of container images. That's, that's where its strengths are. It has, uh, it's in use, has a fair, fair amount of uh, adoption. Uh, it has now over 200 stars on GitHub, which is not a lot, but I'm proud. <laughs> and so its strengths are like analyzing your source code and capturing it. Uh, it captures the container image in a really opinionated but detailed way. Uh, it will capture all of the Go dependencies. Uh, it uh, analyzes, when you point it at an image, it will also extract all of the system uh, dependencies. Uh, that means the, the operating system packages installed inside of your image. Uh, we support both Alpine and Debian. Uh, and of course, one of the things that are lacking in SBOM tools today is honesty. So what is BOM not good for? Like creating deploy SBOMs, which are the, the SBOMs that capture a piece of software that is already installed. That means the configuration files and the way it's uh, uh, running in an actual, like once it's deployed in a system, it doesn't support, um, it does, it's not, it doesn't support and it's not supposed to ever support SCA type decomposition of uh, software packages or in, in pieces of software. That, that means if you have a binary or another um, already compiled uh, piece of software, BOM will never try to guess what's in that because it's designed to work earlier in the supply chain. Uh, and finally, it doesn't currently work with other languages uh, than Go. We, ha we have had some requests to add them, uh, but we're partnering with a, uh, another project that's spun off of SPDX, which is called the Open SBOM Generator. And we're trying to build their reusable, reusable code analyzers that we can plug into BOM, but that's subject for another um, talk maybe. And then um, the other, uh, big tool that we have is uh, our Salsa tester, which is a um, Salsa is a standard to, uh, to express the provenance of software. Uh, that means basically a signed uh, piece, uh, a signed attestation that tells you who, how, and when they built the software, so that you can understand that what you're what you're holding on your hand and about to install your system or run it inside of your cluster actually matches and was built by and how it was supposed to, to be running. So um, Tejolote is, is uh, okay, so Tejolote comes from the Mexican Spanish word of the Mexican mortar, which is the handpiece that you use to grind salsa. That's why it's called Tejolote. And I also enjoy watching people from other countries trying to pronounce it. <laughs> so uh, the, um, what it does is that um, the way Tejolote works is that it will observe well, two things. One, your build system as it runs, and then 
uh, you tell it where to expect the artifacts. Uh, in, so that build system is going to output those artifacts and it's going to re uh, record whatever it, uh, it outputs. And this is, uh, we are about to start replacing the current Salsa, the station generation set of, uh, of Crail when we release Kubernetes by this externally running system. And the reason that what we're, why we're doing this is because you should never try to generate the provenance inside of uh, your builder because it, you should treat it as an untrust uh, piece of, uh, of software. Um, so this is the way it works. It watches the build system, uh, records the software as it goes in, watches the run well, using, using uh, public, uh, like externally, uh, APIs that you can uh, ask the, the build system. And then once it publishes the artifacts, it will record them. Uh, so the current build systems that it supports are um, um, GitHub Actions, Google Cloud Build, and now we have uh, almost finished the support to, for Proud so that we can record the Kubernetes projects as they build. So you, you ingest the source code, well, the build system uses the source code, builds, and then you can uh, point it to record the artifacts from an SBOM, which is, to me, the ideal, the ideal part, uh, from an OCI registry, so it will notice the new images that show up in a registry, buckets to find for search for archives or binaries, um, the native uh, artifacts of those build systems, like if you have a GitHub Actions run, it will look for the artifact server, file systems or the stations. They need uh, the most important part, it will generate the attestation and sign it with six or after, after it's uh, done. Okay, then the, the, the other tool we have is the publish release. It's like a very tiny tool that does like help you to push all your artifacts that you build to a GitLab release for now. Eventually we might add uh, like a GitLab and others as well, but uh, since we work like very tight with GitHub, this that makes more sense for us at, for now. Contributions are welcome to extend this as well. And this also generates s bound generation and that they have like, a, they can import the release notes that we generate from the another tool. And then uh, as you can see, this is an example that for the release notes that uh, it's uh, push uh, on the GitHub release. The other tool we have is the release notes itself. Like everybody that contributes to Kubernetes and uh, CNCF, almost all the, the CNCF projects, they have, when you open a PR, they have like specific uh, section in the summary PR that you put like release notes. You write that thing, like you write your release notes, you can write your breaking changes or action items that the user might need to take action. And uh, together with this, this uh, piece of section, including with the labels in GitHub, like the kind uh, feature, kind bug, kind uh, API change, these kind of things, uh, the release notes uh, fetches all the information from one uh, uh, reference to the, to the end reference, for, like, let's say for the release one, two, three to the release one, two, four, and they fetch all the chains between those chains and generate the release notes. To this happen, like uh, if you think about your own project, your open source project or your own patch project in GitHub, you can only, you need to add this uh, session in your PR because the release notes gonna fetch all the PRs including that time range, in that range, and fetch and look for this specific session. And uh, if you don't enforce people to use that, when you generate the release notes, it's gonna be empty. That's the, the thing you need to do before like making enforce. In, in Kubernetes, we have pro that enforce the release notes to be written or we, you skip the release notes in, the, in some cases if those are needed, but you need somehow enforce. We are working in a GitHub uh, application that uh, people can use and just uh, add to your repository that can enforce that thing. But then you can use the release notes as well. All right, so um, for a while now, uh, we have C release manages several projects, not just Kubernetes, but we have also our repositories that generate artifacts and other things. So until now we had had these binaries like floating around and uh, whenever I wanted to cut a new release, I would go and just build it and sometimes create like an action or a tag and always getting bad and my dad here would get like really angry at me like, what are you doing with this is all wrong. So we decided to come up with a better solution 
And then we are like introducing, like we're creating some GitHub Actions that help you to have all these tools. If you use Git, uh, GitHub Actions as your CI CD stuff, that is gonna be easier that you can just uh, use that action, install the, 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 the tools you need and use in your pipelines. That's the, the things we are like, uh, we are working here. Like we have this repository for now called the release actions. And this includes, for now, right now, we include the uh, Baum Te, te Holote and uh, Zeitgeist and, uh, and, uh, and these three tools. The other tools, Cosign is implicitly uh, uh, installed because we are, like all the, our binaries is signed by Cosign. And then when you use this action, it also uses Cosign to verify the, the signatures for that binary then the, we add that as well, like is it implicit and installed. And uh, the one that is missing, we are working to put this is the publish release and the release notes. We didn't talk about Zeitgeist here because Zeitgeist is more for checking your dependencies and uh, alert you in the dependencies you have, you need to track. That's the, another uh, tool that is not uh, like tight related to this talk. Okay, let's Pray for the gods of demos now. Uh, I'm gonna show we have, okay, this is the repository for the release actions. And uh, as you can see, we have like, like the, the three I talked, and then you can like read and start using it right away. We created this repository here for like, a, to show how to use those tools in a really, really simple Go project. And we're gonna we're gonna use Go release for building the project and push the the artifacts for us to GitHub release. I'm gonna cut a, a tag here and ha have the the job running while I explain to you all how the workflow works here. Just uh, I'm using it sign to sign my commits. And that's why I have this workflow here. And. As we can see here, it might kick, yeah. It kicks the release. Okay, let's uh, take a look on the, is this size good or? <laughs> Better? Okay, this is the a simple Go release uh, the configuration file that uh, just uh, builds the, the project we have in different uh, like uh, art, uh, architectures. And uh, there's a sign uh, session called sign here that signs with cosign the binaries. And this is the, the important part for, for the tool we have. It also generates the, the S bond for us using the BOM uh, utility. And this is the arguments we have. It's gonna like uh, generate the uh, uh, output called example.json.xpdx. This is the, the most important part that you, you need to know from the Go release uh, uh, section. For the release pipeline, it's, uh, it's pretty simple actually. It's like really straightforward. We, it listens uh, every time we push a tag that's gonna kick our release and we check out the code. We set up the, the, the Go as this is a very standard uh, steps that we need to do. We explicitly install Cosign here because we want to um, make sure that it's really installed, but it's installed in the next one. And then this installed the bone utility for us. And then we run the, the Go release here. And that's the gonna build the, the, the binaries for our release push and including the, the view of materials. The next session is the attestation part, the provenance part that we do like we also check out. We then in this time we install Telehote to uh, generate the provenance for us. And then we run here the, the binary to generate the, our intoto.json file that uh, have the provenance there. And uh, in this case, we right now we are using like another action for another uh, person in the GitHub marketplace just to push that to 
to our GitHub release, but as soon we have the published release, we can use that one here as well. So one of the things that I wanted to show here is the way that Teholote re registers uh, the build system and how you point it to, uh, to, to record the, the runs and the artifacts. So it has, this is the binary, Teholote, and then it, it does a test that has a, this is like the simple run when you just point it to an already run run <laughs> and then so you specify where it will read the artifacts uh, so the build system is going to put the, the artifacts there and then uh, you and we created this um, URLs uh, with uh, the different providers that the Hadoop support so it's GitHub for the artifacts and also GitHub here for the run so you point it to the GitHub Actions run and to the GitHub Actions artifacts where it's gonna, to the release page artifacts where it's gonna to pick them up. Yeah. If you are using Cloud Build, you're gonna switch GitHub for Cloud Build or uh, eventually Pro in the, in the future. Okay, I guess the release is out, it's finished. And if you go to the release page, we're gonna see how the, the binaries we generate are like the, the go release for us to generate the checksums, the, all the, the binaries and the signatures for the, the image, the, the binary signing. And uh, we have the, in total, the provenance uh, attestation here, including the SBOM SPDX. Let's do a quick look if Okay, this is the, the uh, bill of materials for the, the we just generated and it contains all the files, it contains uh, all the dependencies and everything that uh, it's expected for as well. And here is the, the provenance attestation. It's signed as well with cosine and uh, if we decode It's gonna show all the, the the attestation, like the information we uh, record from the, the build system. Let's go back. Where is it? I think I closed it. Oh no, here. Okay, this we went through, and. Okay, so now. We have, if you saw the examples, you may have noticed that they were all on my personal GitHub re repository. And this is because we have been working uh, during this year to ensure that it can actually build our projects and seek release and we can now use it externally. Uh, but you don't want to be running it from our organization. So what we're gonna do is donate it live here with you uh, because uh, we, want, we want it to live inside of Kubernetes. And uh, just uh, one comment while he's doing the, the donation. Uh, our tools, like the bone, the Terra Horte, is uh, we are doggy fooding itself. Like the, the, the binaries that we generate for bone is getting the bill of material for itself and get the attestation as well. So this is the, the you open? our work for the last month, so, so here it goes. So what we're doing now is um, donating the new repo to like letting off <laughs> our house to uh, live now on the, on the Kubernetes organization. So um, once we bug enough people, maybe it'll get accepted as part of <laughs> SIG release and uh, everybody will be able to, to join it. So that's the issue donation. So if you wanna go and see it, um, you can, take a picture, maybe post one it so that uh, people think that uh, we didn't like bribe you live. So, um, but yeah, so this is um, where we are gonna be starting scaffolding all of our tooling so that you can reuse them easier, easier because we had had some feedback that it was kind of difficult to start using uh, the tools that, that we put out. So uh, we now have ensured that they um, work well with GitHub Actions. We chose to call it the release toolkit for because why not? And yeah, it's ready for everybody to use. 
So um, this is what we had, and uh, we have like five minutes for questions. So if you think this is useful and would like to use it, and we're missing something, we would like to uh, definitely hear uh, from you. Yeah, we are, like if you have like, a, when you start implementing your project, if you have questions, you can ping us in the Slack or open an issue or smoke signal, whatever. We have to, to help you. Yeah, I mean, once you build them, yeah. The, the one limitation that we have is the, the, our s generator only works with Go. And so we're working on the other language plugins, which were, so it, the, the SPDX s open s generator is a project that was spun out of the SPDX project to make it more neutral. So other, other tools are like other contributors trying to get it fit so that we can have like a common base of libraries that understand language dependencies and then it will be able to do it. But the other things, yeah, you can, you can use them. <laughs> no, no, this is good. So for context, we have been uh, adopting these tools for, to secure the supply chain for VTES. Um, but well, uh, I have a question and it's, what happens if I generate S bombs with another tool Am I still able to use the Colote as it is? Yes, yes, it's independent. Sweet. Yeah, well, so the Colote is the salsa tester, so it creates salsa testations. It understands S bomb. So if you run a build and it outputs an S bomb, it's you can use that document to tell the Colote that the, the actual list of items that you want to attest. And if that tool creates a valid S1, which is not as common as it sounds. Yeah. It should be able to parse it, understand the, 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 the release artifacts, and create an attestation of them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, well, it doesn't matter if the S1 is signed or not. Yeah, so. no, but like, but that's why we feed it into the oh, okay, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes, Mm, thanks. So, did it? Uh, is it using the GitHub Actions uh, token somehow to attest to using OIDC or something that it is the right kind of builder uh, using cosine? Or yeah, it used the OIDC token from GitHub. Then uh, it generates the token and then go the the entire flow with SIG store that generates the temporary certificate with that token that attests that uh, belongs to that repository, mm -hmm. and then sign. Okay, and there, there's different keys for each binary, or was it just a... Every time you, you generate, you're gonna generate a new certificate and stuff, and then gonna be like, but uh, everything is pushed to the transparency log, then you can validate and check out the certificates as yeah, well. Yeah, I was thinking when it was different pen files for each binary. Yeah, if you yeah. don't want to use the, the, the OIDC token and you want to use the, your specific key, you need to provide like the, the, you need to generate the key with cosine generate key, and then you, you can pass that, that key to during your build. Okay, cool. And there, is, there was protection, one needs to put protection that the tags are signed, of yeah. course, in GitHub before, otherwise it won't. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool, thanks. Any other? We're gonna be around like a, a few minutes here and there, but we can f you can find us around uh, in the conference and uh, in the in the booth as well. Thank you. <laughs>